good morning, buenos dias, hola, nice to see everybody here this morning. Um, and I want to, first of all, uh, extend to you on behalf of all of the people of Toronto a welcome, because I know many of you are from out of town. And uh, I'm glad that you're here. And Miriam, I, I congratulate you on once again putting on uh, a successful conference. She, she just uh, introduced me now to the concept of Latin American time, which I hadn't, uh, <laughs> hadn't focused on. And I guess I could have stayed in my office and worked for another hour and then uh, come out. And I don't say that in any critical way. She was the one that introduced the concept to me. But I should say to you, those who are from out of town, we welcome you here. Uh, and I want to disclose to you, because it's only fair that I should, we've passed a bylaw recently uh, which uh, requires us to examine your suitcases at the airport when you're leaving Toronto. And if we don't find enough evidence there of shopping that's been done while you're here, <laughs> you'll be sent back downtown. And so I'm just trying to help you avoid awkward moments at the airport uh, when you're leaving uh, town. We have supported this event as a city. You can see the city's logo up on the banner right here behind me, and, uh, and, and that's because we believe uh, very much in, in the work that's being done here, uh, and we, we believe it is important to develop and to expand these kinds of relationships, especially uh, with entrepreneurs. Uh, Miriam made mention very kindly of the fact that I've been a champion for uh, entrepreneurs. What I'm really a champion for is for enterprise. I'm a champion for growth. I'm a champion for jobs. And, and people often suggest in this city, as they probably do in places where you come from, that you have a choice that you must make between attracting global investment of global companies, big companies, or a startup community uh, and having it flourish. And I don't accept that there's a choice. I think both help the others, and we have been uh, very fortunate to attract the investment here of a lot of global companies in recent years, uh, made very big investments in Toronto, created a lot of jobs. I think one of the reasons they've done that is because of the fact that we also have a flourishing startup community, um, and I think in turn that the startup community has benefited from the presence of the global companies. And so I've worked very hard with the tech uh, ecosystem here uh, to make sure that we're attracting both that we are, uh, we are growing a startup community that is robust and that is creating jobs uh, and that is able to grow here instead of the old pattern, which had those companies grow to a certain extent and then find, often because of a lack of money, not a lack of talent, and I'll make reference to that in a moment, but often because of a lack of financing, they would then either sell the company to somebody in Silicon Valley or the United States or uh, they would uh, move the company uh, to uh, usually the Silicon Valley. And I'm very pleased to report to you uh, that that trend has, uh, has reversed itself uh, in the last few years. And now what we have uh, is we have a situation where people are actually calling us from Silicon Valley to say, we think we would like to come and do business in Toronto. Uh, companies are now uh, seeing that there's a path for them to grow themselves here in Toronto uh, and to obtain the financing, uh, which they previously found uh, to be difficult to obtain. I'll tell you that even in my short time as the mayor, um, I, uh, in my first year, made a trip down to Silicon Valley to try and attract back to Toronto some of the thousands of Canadians who've been well-educated here at places like Waterloo, which I'm sure you're familiar with, and the U University of Toronto. But then they pursued opportunity in Silicon Valley because they thought that there wasn't adequate opportunity here in the tech uh, ecosystem. And now what's happening is that we're getting calls from people who want to come the other way. When I went down there to try and recruit them back, they said, well, you know, we'd love to come home. But there just isn't the opportunity, the, the scale of opportunity, the size, the range of opportunity uh, in Toronto that uh, we would uh, like to have in front of us. And that has reversed itself to the point where last year, or 2017 is the last year for which we have final numbers, there were more tech jobs created here in Toronto than Silicon Valley, New York, Washington put together. And so this is the kind of growth that we're seeing. But again, it is coming in a balanced way between the startup community, which is healthy and flourishing, um, and finding financing here and deciding they can scale up here. And so you get companies like Wattpad, for example, some of you will know, uh, that's a very much a global company and very much a global platform. But it has grown here because the founder, Alan Lau, is committed to growing here and has found he can grow here. Shopify, you know very well, is a, another global company founded in Ottawa. Uh, but now building a very extensive presence in Toronto. In fact, I've said to the executives there that my objective uh, is, uh, and it's nothing personal, uh, to make sure we have more employees before too long in Toronto than they have in Ottawa, just because I know that here we can help that company to grow. It doesn't matter really where it's headquartered. The point is that the company, a proud Canadian company, is going to grow. And so in that context, I very much welcome 
uh, the opportunity for us to have international relationships. In fact, we need those international relationships, and I very much understand as the mayor the fact that those international relationships have to provide for growth both ways. It's not all about us having investment that is made by people like yourselves in Toronto, though I welcome it. It's also about us finding ways in which we can uh, invest in the places from which you come uh, and forge true partnerships. It's about us finding ways in which we can lead people from Canada to do business uh, with you, because I know that uh, it's very much a kind of a two-way uh, relationship. Sabemos lo importante que es para nosotros trabajar con las empresas latinoamericanas y sobre todo de ofrecerles la oportunidad para que se establezcan en Toronto con éxito. Nuestras relaciones con América Latina son fuertes y lo seguirían siendo de ahora en adelante. And I apologize for my Spanish. How was it? <laughs> Did did anybody understand a word that I said? Most people are turning to the person sitting beside them going, what language is he speaking? <laughs> but I think it's for the reasons that I tried to get across in Spanish in terms of the strength and importance of the relationship between Canada and Toronto and the Latin American communities that I should tell you. We're very actively planning a trip. Uh, I, I lead uh, groups uh, to different parts of the world, and when I say I lead a group, I just took a group of about 40 people to Los Angeles, as I do every year in that case, and we, take about, we took about 40 people from the film and television industry to Los Angeles because we have a huge film and television industry here. Uh, and uh, what we go there to do is to form relationships and, and uh, having the mayor as the head of the delega delegation often helps to get meetings and bring people out to receptions and so forth. And we do uh, a trip or, or, or two every year to other parts of the world beyond the one we would do every year to Los Angeles. And we're planning a trip uh, to Latin America, to, the Lat to, to some Latin American countries uh, sometime in the next short while. I will just tell you that we're in the midst of, uh, of sorting out where we're going to go. Um, and at the moment on our minds, uh, based on sort of indications of interest, are uh, Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, Mexico, uh, Panama, and I think that's the list. But I realize that le leaves off a number of companies very well, pre well represented here today, like Uruguay, I gather, has a big delegation, uh, and so on. I'm telling you uh, right now that I'm, that I'm very open to, to shaping the itinerary of that trip, uh, dependent upon the interest that is expressed by people like yourselves. Um, I'm very clear in saying I don't travel for the sake of traveling. I don't travel so that I can go and sit by a swimming pool somewhere and have a, one of those drinks with an umbrella in it. Um, that gets the taxpayers very angry if they think I'm doing that, and rightly so. Um, I travel, and, and my itinerary is very intense, um, to go and see business people to go and see business people who might invest in Toronto, to go and see business people who are looking for markets in Toronto, but also to go and see business, uh, to take business people from Toronto to uh, do business with you and people that you would know from the countries from which you come. And so I would just say to you now that if you have some interest in, in saying, well, look, the place you should go with your group is to our country, whatever that may be, um, please tell Miriam or tell our economic development people that she can put you in touch with uh, because we're soon going to have to make a decision about where we're going to go and exactly when we're going to go. Um, but it's all about creating jobs. And, it's, and I understand it's about creating jobs in both places. The only other thing I want to comment on this morning um, is, is the approach we're trying to take to the tech ecosystem here because I think it might help you to understand some of the, I'll call it some of the values that lie behind what we're trying to do here. We're not just trying to grow the sector for the sake of saying that we have more jobs here and being able to say we had more jobs than Silicon Valley. That's a nice thing to be able to say. It employs a lot of people who live in this city. And as you know, by definition, when we employ people who live in this city, we're employing a very diverse population because the word diversity was mentioned uh, earlier on. Uh, this is the most diverse city in the world that you are presently in. 51% of the population of Toronto was born outside the country. And so, and there is no city in the world that can have, that has a percentage of its population, no big city uh, like that. And so that makes us by definition a global city, but it also puts on our shoulders some very important responsibilities with respect to making sure that we're not just diverse, but that we're inclusive. The diversity of Toronto is a fact. Uh, the inclusiveness of Toronto is a goal. And I will just say to you that we're trying very hard in that regard, and I think that, that meetings like this taking place here every year, thanks to the initiative of people like Miriam, are very important to us because 
we want to find ways uh, to engage people who are themselves just getting themselves fully integrated into our business community and indeed into our city. One of the areas of fastest population growth in the City of Toronto is people who have moved here from Latin American and South American and Central American co uh, countries. Uh, it's been an interesting trend that I've seen. I, for example, could tell you that when I was young, and that's a long time ago, but when I was young, um, you would rarely hear French spoken on the streets of Toronto, because Toronto was a very English city, even in a country that had two official languages. Today you hear French spoken on the streets of the city all the time, but the next language, and you, you know, I have a tiny ear for it only because I took Spanish in high school, that the next language you hear spoken most frequently on the streets of Toronto and in different places is Spanish. Um, and most of those people are not, uh, not Spaniards, but rather are, are um, people who have moved here uh, from Latin American countries. The government, as you know, has tried to make this easier, and I know there are people here today who have benefited from this initiative, which we told them was a crucially important building block in our tech ecosystem, namely to have immigration policies which were friendly uh, to the need that tech companies often have here or from abroad to locate people here so they could grow their businesses. And we've been immensely benefited by that program because it has made it easier for Canadian, existing Canadian companies or existing Latin American-based companies to grow uh, their companies here by bringing in the best and the brightest and the smartest from around the world, including from Latin America. But it's also made it possible for Canadian-based companies, it's Shopify, Wattpad, whoever it might be, or global companies that have located in Toronto, it's made it easier for all of those companies to select the very best and the very smartest people from around the world and get them in to Toronto quickly. And that has been a huge benefit, and I commend the Government of Canada for being so responsive to something we said. And I mention it here only so that you will know that is a part of our immigration system that is available should you locate here for your benefit because it will allow you to bring in smart people from elsewhere to help build uh, your business here. But we also look at that as an opportunity and an obligation to make sure that we do our best to encourage diversity uh, in the businesses themselves and in the tech ecosystem as a whole. Because uh, we've achieved very little if we have the most diversity in the world, but that those people of diverse backgrounds are not represented in all aspects of our economy, in our political system, in our cultural world, and so on. So we're making a particular effort, and we started, to be honest, with women. Uh, women uh, who were, were and still continue to be underrepresented in the tech ecosystem of Toronto, but we're making progress. Uh, we have a wonderful organization here called Move the Dial that some of you may know of, founded by a Torontonian and now becoming a global. Her name is Jody Kovitz. And she uh, encouraged me to do things as simple as to say that I would not attend uh, tech events in Toronto that did not have an adequate representation of women on the panels and in the audience of people who were attending. And so only a couple of times now, we've said that that's the case and most people got the message, but a couple of times now we've had to say, well, I'm sorry, I just can't come uh, to that event because you're just not making the effort to make sure that women are represented on the panels and in the, uh, in the audience for these events and uh, they weren't able to alter their approach in time, so we just didn't go. Most organizations, if we have to say that to them at the beginning, um, make improvements uh, in the composition of their panels and so on, and most have got the message from the beginning. And I think this is a small thing that we can do uh, to try to make sure that we are moving, uh, you know, right from the day when young girls are in school. And I met somebody just a moment ago that has a, a business they're trying to launch uh, here, uh, one of you in attendance, uh, that, ha that is, is about teaching kids uh, coding at an early age through summer camps and so on. And I can only hope that that reaches a large number of young girls so that they understand that there is a future every bit as bright for them uh, in this business. There always was. There was never any reason for the, the gender skew that we saw over a period of many years. But this fits into a broader context that I addressed, and I'm just about done here, Miriam, because I know that there may be a degree of impatience. Um, it fits into a... Um, a broader agenda we have, and I addressed it at a blockchain conference we had here uh, about 10 days ago. And, and that is that we, we, we really would like to see here uh, in Toronto not just better representation of women, not just better reflection of diversity in the ranks of our tech ecosystem. And it is interesting, not unlike Silicon Valley, many of the startups here that are doing well, in fact, were founded by people who are immigrants to Canada and uh, somebody else will study what all that means in the context of both Silicon Valley and here. Um, it comes as no surprise to me because uh, in all areas, not just tech, 
people who we've been blessed to have come to this country um, have done well because I think they have a strong entrepreneurial drive uh, to do well and to take advantage of the opportunity that they have by coming to a country like this uh, to, and, and prove that they can do what they might not have been able to do uh, in their country of origin. But I said at the blockchain conference, and I repeat here today, that in our tech ecosystem, and I hope this is an advertisement, uh, an encouragement for many of you to come here even in faster and even in greater numbers than you might have thought of doing, we also want to see the technology, whether it's blockchain or a host of other technologies, put to work to achieve a valid social purpose as well. So it isn't just about how many jobs you create or how much money you make. I'm a free enterpriser. I was a CEO of a big company before I came to be the mayor of Toronto. I want to see people make a profit. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, there's a lot of things right about it because those profits, taxed fairly, uh, provide for the money that we need in government to make sure we pro provide programs to support people and build transit and do the things that people expect us to do. And so I know only by companies investing here and making money here are we going to be able to do that. But I also want to see us start to use the technology for beneficial social purposes. And again, I met a couple of uh, people uh, this morning, uh, the, the, com the company that I met from uh, Brazil, uh, which exists uh, to help, uh, yes, to produce backpacks, which I hope are sold at a profit. But the bottom line is that what they're doing in the meantime is having an agenda that focuses on having uh, people who are refugees and may otherwise be in need of some support or certainly in need of employment uh, to get that employment. And so we're very interested in that here. To, and it's not to say people have to have uh, that as part of their agenda. We just want to encourage them to do so, so that the broad population, that diverse population I made reference to, uh, can see that technology isn't just about uh, creating more jobs and creating better ways to do things, all of which are good, but is also about trying to achieve some social purpose that says we're going to move ahead uh, the agenda of people who want to live better lives. And again, it all ties together, because to me, a lot of the people came and ironically, you're here today on a, a day we designate each year as Newcomers Day. And in fact, if you're having a break at lunchtime, I don't know if you are, there's a whole celebration happening in the square in front of the City Hall uh, dedicated to the well-being and to say thank you and to say we support you and we stand with you uh, to newcomers who have come uh, to Canada in the last couple of years. But it's meant to say to newcomers and people who've been here for generations, uh, we're going to put technology to use for a beneficial social purpose. One last thing I want to say, the final thing, and that's this. Um, I, uh, you're, you're visitors here, and many of you will go home in a few days, and we hope you'll come back, we hope you'll invest, and so on. But I just want you to know that um, we, we're living in a world, as you well know, because you watch it the same way we do from here. And it's a world that's very troubling in many respects. There's a lot of things to be encouraged by, but there's a lot of things to be troubled about at the same time. We could be troubled about climate change and what that's doing, and it's certainly changing situations here in many respects. The thing that most troubles me at the moment um, is the trend uh, towards uh, division and polarization in the world where uh, people, uh, for reasons best known to them, uh, and some of them in leadership, important leadership positions, are trying to polarize and divide the population. Um, our diversity here has taught us that what you have to do is spend all of your time, and if you think about this country, and most of you won't know much about Canadian history, but joining our indigenous people, who of course have lived here for centuries, we had two founding cultures in this country, French and English. Um, and so from the beginning, we had two official languages in the country. We had respect that was paid to the, to the two founding cultures. And I think it may have uh, taught us from the beginning that you had to um, make sure that you brought people together instead of dividing people. That you, if you were going to try and bring together two founding cultures together with our indigenous people, um, and, and you know, we have some uh, big improvements we have to make with regard to the treatment of our indigenous peoples as well. But if you want to bring people together, you have to make an effort to do it and that that leads you to believe that trying to divide people, trying to push them apart, find reasons for them to have divisions with, with one another, take polarizing approaches in that regard on the basis of faith or nationality or skin color, is just going to be a mistake. It's going to be a mistake that leads to the kind of division and polarization we've seen around the world. I just want you to know here, uh, we are committed, and you'll find a virtually universal commitment to saying that is the wrong way to take the world. It's not up to us to judge what other places and other countries and other leaders do. We just can do what's right for us. And what we're going to continue to do here, the vast majority of the leadership of this country, including me, as the mayor of the country's biggest city and the fourth biggest city in North America, is to say we're going to concentrate on bringing people together, encouraging a culture of respect, encouraging a culture that embraces diversity on every basis possible, faith, sexual orientation, 
race, nationality, skin color, um, and that we're going to work hard to do that because we think that's the right direction to go. We think it's the right direction for the world to go, but our job is to make sure that we do a good job of that at home. Uh, so I, I thank you all for coming to Toronto. I remind you about making sure you do that shopping so you don't have a bad moment at the airport. Um, and I hope this conference uh, goes very well and that many of you uh, will do business with us here, uh, that we will do business with you uh, in the countries in which you uh, are resident, uh, and uh, that you will uh, quite seriously tell Miriam uh, and through her to our economic development people if there are prospects for me uh, to lead a group to come and uh, visit with or otherwise do business with uh, when I travel to the region uh, not too long from now. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you.